Okay, let's start with a very typical uh, projectile motion. So it's projected here. This is at the peak of the projectile motion when the velocity is purely horizontal and this is the way down. You've got to know that uh, a projectile motion is symmetrical about the peak. So it takes as long for the projectile to go from here to here as it takes for it to go from here to here. The time taken to go up this height and the time taken to fall down this height is the same. And these two distances here are exactly the same. So everything is symmetrical about the peak. Alright? So now let's bring in the wall. We know that the wall caught the projectile when it's at the peak. We know because uh, when it, the projectile hits the wall, it doesn't have any vertical component. Its velocity is purely horizontal. And we were told that it is a 6.6 .6 meter per second. So now we have the wall, which catches it at the peak. And therefore, the ball reflects, it rebounds. Now, if, if it had rebounded with no loss in Ke, that means if it had rebounded with a speed of 6.6 .6 meter per second, then this, pro this projectile would trace back exactly this same path and lands at the original spot here. Because this motion is exactly the same as this motion if the wall was not there. Right? But if the reflection was not elastic, which was the case in this question, it rebounded with a speed that's less than before, then obviously this projectile will trace out a path that looks something like this. And we will land uh, nearer. It will not land back at this spot here. And we are supposed to uh, provide an explanation for that. So we are going to say that um, the reflection actually did not cause any change to the vertical motion. If you compare this motion and this motion, actually they have the same initial velocity of zero. They both have the same constant downward acceleration of 9.81 per meter, uh, meter per second square. And of course, they must fall through this uh, distance of 1.8 meters. So the vertical motion is totally unaffected, which means that the time of flight is the same for these two projectiles. It takes the same amount of time for them to fall down this height. But since the horizontal velocity of this guy is smaller, it, during the same amount of time, surely it, must, uh, it can only do a shorter horizontal distance. That's, therefore, it's not able to fall back at the ori original spot. So as with all projectile motion, uh, we expect you to be able to analyze the motion vertically and horizontally separately. And that's the key to solving this question. Okay, ta-ta!